How's it going guys? This is Anime Anxiety and we got chapter 168 and now we got some English translations with it. So let's just get right into the chapter. So this chapter picks up pretty much where chapter 167 left off. Garo and Saitama are trading blows back and forth. Garo tries punching Saitama through a hyperspace gate, but Saitama dodges it and punches him right through the same hyperspace gate, landing a blow right to the face. And as he's flying, Garo opens up another hyperspace gate to deliver a drop kick onto Saitama, not before Saitama lands a solid blow to his gut. Now as he's flying, Garo opens yet another hyperspace gate to try to get a sneak attack on Saitama, but of course Saitama's much too fast for him and he's already way above him, using a rock to catapult himself back onto Garo and karate chops him right on the top of the head, which creates this enormous shockwave in the surrounding area. And Garo notices that this is Saitama copying his moves and Saitama kind of taunts him saying that he thought he was going to surpass him so what's going on here. And Garo is just continually getting frustrated because he notes that he continues to copy his power blow for blow but Saitama just keeps getting stronger and stronger. And the gap between them is just getting further and further away and we see these charts that Murata draws where it's basically Saitama above Garo and they're kind of close to each other but the the power gap between them becomes more and more apparent as this fight goes on. And it's kind of implied that Saitama is actually getting stronger and stronger as this fight goes on. And this is where the narrator cops in and says, even now, Saitama was continuing to grow. His rate of growth, which had gone unnoticed by anyone since there was nobody remotely on par with his strength, suddenly began to soar exponentially due to an upsurge of emotion like none have ever seen before. And now the only one on a level to be able to observe Saitama's growth was getting completely left behind. And then Saitama notes that his outfit got blown off so he's starting to get cold. So as Garo tries to deliver another punch to Saitama he grabs the punch and then like has this like stoic look on his face but then it turns out that he actually needs to sneeze and as he's about to sneeze the narrator says there was no longer anybody left to measure what level Saitama's strength had reached and guys this is what it had reached because he lets out this enormous sneeze and it's actually called the serious sneeze it's a new serious move and the blow from it is so powerful that it splits the fragmented rocks of Io in half hits Jupiter and blows away the thousands and thousands of miles of gas that line Jupiter and hit it straight to the core. And of course, like all of us are, Garl's completely stunned by this and, and he's like, what the hell is this monster? So this sneeze sends him flying through space and as they're flying through it, Garo notices the sun and he says if the sun's in his range of vision, he can teleport there. So he strikes Saitama and just at that moment, he teleports them both to the center of the sun and then teleports himself away from there immediately. So Garo now thinks that he's finally won because he's literally dumped Saitama in the sun and there's no way he can either A, survive that or B, make it back to earth from where he is. So Garo starts prematurely celebrating, but of course our boy Saitama is unscathed and Garo's obviously wondering like how the hell did he get back to earth without teleporting there? And he said, I had a stomach ache from the cold and was holding it in but when I got surprised by the flash of light a fart came out and basically a fart is what flew him all the way through space all the way back to earth and I, I just think that's so freaking hilarious guys like I know people bag on Saitama for being like a gag character and and this is a very perfect example of that but I don't know I just love how like ridiculous and outlandish all this stuff is because it just makes it so much more entertaining to watch and read along every other week. So immediately after explaining this, Saitama delivers one gigantic smash right to Garo's face and they go beaming straight for Earth and this punch actually starts cracking off Garo's Saitama mode shell. So then Garo wonders why Saitama hasn't finished him off yet and this is when Saitama says, Compared to people like you with your quick costume changes or king, I really hate the fact that I'm not cut out for this at all. But it's because I'm a hero. Not to mention, it was also that kid's final request that I stop you without killing you. And Garo is confused as to what he means by final request and he looks over at Terio who I guess now is dead like the cosmic radiation killed him. And then Garo's just like straight up thrown into despair after this and guys this is probably like one of the saddest moments of One Punch Man that I've ever read. Because 
because this one hit me guys this one really did i'm not gonna lie to you saitama's confused and he says where are you going the kids over there and garo just goes on to say it's my fault i was too close to you and as he's running he trips and falls on his face and continues to cry this is when saitama notes that you've been acting really weird ever since you fell from the sky are you sure some weirdo didn't do something to you and garo responds by saying if they did it's because my spirit was too weak so Garo just continues to sulk and says it's laughable if I can't beat you I can't become absolute evil and then the hero that takes me down says I'm not cut out to be a hero you could at least act like one if you could have just killed me with a smug look on your face waving around your crazy idea of justice I could have gone out like true evil and then it cuts back to Terio and he goes on now the one I wanted to save first by changing the world because of me he's and Saitama cuts him off here and says you wanted to save him you weren't just clinging to him for support and Garo gets confused by this and says what would you know but, but before he finishes he notices the core in Saitama's hand and says to him is that what you're doing too he then goes on to say there's no way a person with that kind of power can keep in their right mind so this is basically saying like Terio was the guy holding Garo down, like Genos is the guy that's holding Saitama down, like keeping them grounded basically, kind of giving them a sense of humanity in all of this because like Saitama is this insanely godlike ultra powerful being and he just feels like a regular person with Genos and that's what Terio did for Garo. So this is when Garo sits up and says I have a favor to ask you and he essentially asks him to copy his fist, to copy his ultimate power because he's going to pull off like the epitome of his power and he wants Saitama to copy it to accomplish a goal. So then this like spiraling galaxy looking thing starts forming in the center of Garo's chest and Saitama assumes the same stance and this is when Garo says if anyone can master the power of God without taking God's hand it's you and God then interrupts them and says silence I'm taking them back so he starts confiscating his power from Garo which of course is going to lead to his death. But before that can happen, the narrator jumps in and says, the two of them were imagining their own inner universes. Particles and antiparticles generated in pairs by Garl's intense cosmic rays. As each subatomic particle began moving in opposite directions, they began to imitate each other's movements. When all the subatomic particles inside Saitama did this, and it kind of cuts back to Garl, and Garl says, now Saitama, get going and defeat it, and goes on to say, you of all people can do it. What you've got to defeat is the ominous future and at this moment Garo turns to complete stone I'm assuming it's because God fully confiscated his powers from Garo therefore killing him and Saitama gets sent into this like time wormhole thing where he sees all the events of the past couple chapters and the fight between them kind of happening at the same time and of course Saitama like we are is totally amazed by this he says I can't believe this your martial arts are awesome Garo and then Saitama sees the part where Garo first gets his cosmic powers after doing the gamma ray burst and appearing in front of the heroes and civilians. He kind of intervenes and pushes his fist through it and nails him right in the face before anything that happens after that occurs. And the narration picks back up and says, that punch abnormally powered up on a moon of Jupiter went back in time and landed before it was thrown. Reversal of casualty absolutely unavoidable and this is where it gets kind of interesting because as Garo is getting nailed and flying with his cosmic shell breaking apart the narration says it took not one punch but zero punches to finish the battle which I think is pretty cool to think about I mean I know this time travel stuff is a little confusing but it's just a cool phrase I don't know I liked it but of course everyone's stunned by this and we see that Genos is still alive because this is of course before he gets killed and everyone is in total shock of this and as this is happening Garl's power starts to seep out of him in front of everybody so this is definitely over and so then we see Saitama's future body, you know, the one that we've been seeing this whole time, merging with Saitama's like current timeline body, the one that hasn't fought Garo on Io and, and outer space and all this stuff, and they merge into one. And apparently Saitama doesn't keep any of his future memories because he's like totally confused. And as he looks down, he notices Genos's core in his hand. And even like funnier than that, he notices that the bottom half of his body is like totally exposed and he just flips out at this just before getting nailed in the stomach by Genos because because maybe Genos was like en route to nailing Garo like he was in chapter 166 when he hit Garo and you know was killed immediately afterwards. 
but that's where the chapter ends. And guys, I, I don't know. I think this chapter was absolutely amazing. I know there's going to be a lot of people that aren't too fond of like the whole time travel stuff. I know I'm usually not really a fan of it, if I'm being honest. But I mean, think about what we got from it. Genos is back. We wanted that. All the people that died from the cosmic radiation are back. You know, we wanted that too. So instead of getting some like super convoluted explanation as to how all these things are going to happen, why not just make it simple? Why not just throw time travel in there? make it make some sense and call it a day. I mean, I I thought it was a great way to kind of wrap things up. The only thing I don't like about this is that Saitama and Garo both don't have their memories from that insane fight. And therefore, I feel like Garo misses out on all that character development, you know, because he has his face turn at the very end and basically sacrifices himself to save everybody. So I don't know how One and Murata are going to give us that same kind of like development in the current Garo, who hasn't experienced all of these things yet. But hey, you know, I'm just nitpicking here at this point. Like I said, I absolutely love this chapter, and I hope you guys did too. But you know, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this chapter, what you think about this whole time travel business. Do you guys like the ending of the fight? Let me know, I want to read your comments. I'm going to be posting a video later this week going more in detail into like a lot of these different things that happen like for example the whole time travel stuff the the mention of god by garo the whole idea of saitama getting like exponentially stronger than he already was just by fighting garo you know things like that i want to i want to make sure i flesh some of these things out because i think they're gonna have some pretty big implications for the future but until then please make sure to subscribe i drop tons and tons of one punch man content every week so you'll definitely have your fill but until next time i'll see you guys later